Hey guys, Yankee Prepper. Today I want to talk to you about America's Mexican scapegoat. Mmm. Mmm. I love rice and beans. Now I have not done a video like this in a long time. Primary reason being I think is because I don't have my heart in it. I've scaled my channel back quite a bit. And uh, a lot of times I think to myself, this has just been a complete waste of time, mostly my time. But I have met a lot of people here I have a lot of things in common with. And, and the people that I do converse with, uh, I enjoy that camaraderie. That's one of the main reasons I stick around. The other thing that, uh, that probably prompted this was a comment in an article written about uh, what Ron Paul was quoted on saying that Mexico has become America's new scapegoat. And I agree with them. I've agreed with this for a while. I, I even ran some videos uh, I guess to attempt to jerk people awake to this. And what I want to do with this video, and I, first off I want to say I'm not condoning illegal immigration. Right off the bat I want to say that. I believe that we are a nation of law and uh, if you want to work here you have to be a legal immigrant. A legal immigrant, not an illegal immigrant. And that illegal immigrants have no rights uh, beyond the fact that they're human and there are certain human inalienable rights. Uh, but you have to be a citizen of this country to work here and you should be. Having said that and cleared that up, I want to lay out what I see as a clear plan to cause the problems that we're going through right now. And that a lot of you that are making these uh, rhetoric videos and you know screaming about illegal immigration and blaming the Mexicans for your problems and taking your jobs and all this, I want you to see that this is a carefully drafted plan that's working perfectly. That's what I'm attempting to do here. And everything I'm telling you and everything that I'm about to show you you should research on your own because you're going to see the bigger picture and just how you know, far gone we really are and how deep the claws are into our country. And that's really what I'm trying to do here. So let me lay this out for you and give you a little peek down my rabbit hole. Prior to the 1980s, Mexico had a rich historical agricultural community. They were really an agricultural based uh, country. 30% uh, of the population was employed through the agricultural uh, community. And they think there was probably four million small farmers before the 1980s in Mexico. In fact, it was a lot like what America looked at one time before all these gigantic farms took the little guys out of the picture and bought up all the land. Mexico was very similar prior to the 1980s. Uh, in 1986, George H. Bush, a true globalist, Mulroney from uh, Canada, the Prime Minister, and Salinas all got together and had a big ceremony with those fancy gold pens. And they brought something forth called NAFTA. Now, if you're not familiar with uh, NAFTA, it's the North American Free Trade Agreement. And now, I'm very familiar with NAFTA. I have to deal with it all the time. I export several different countries in one of my businesses, one of them being Mexico. And uh, this NAFTA was supposed to make everything fair and, and bring up the little guy, just like all these crazy stories are telling you now with all these crazy plans that they have. And they laid this out and rah, 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 but it was just a ceremonial thing. I think they were just testing the waters to see if anybody would say anything. Uh, by 1993, Bill Clinton came around and signed the thing into law. So all of you, on a side note, who think there's any difference between the Republican Party and the Democrat Party, that's long time gone. The parties are all fighting for the same thing, big government, little people. Um, I do believe there are differences between conservative and liberal, socialist and capitalist. But there's very little difference, if any, between Democrat and Republican at this point. And within one decade after NAFTA is signed into law, three million of those small farmers in Mexico are gone. They're gone for good. And, you know, one thing about farmers, all that information that they had, all that, you know, hundreds of years of uh, heritage farming is completely wiped out. That stuff is never coming back. Those guys are long gone, and all the knowledge that they had are long gone. Well, three million, they figure, three million small Mexican farmers went out of business within a decade after NAFTA was signed. What a plan and how well it did work. All the people that they hired, no more jobs. So there were just millions and millions of Mexicans that for generations have held these farms and generations had worked for these farmers. All those jobs were gone. How did that happen? Well, your tax dollars in the United States 
once the NAFTA floodgates were open. Your tax dollars in the United States subsidize corn. Corn. That's why it's so cheap. That's why it's used in everything. Corn's used in everything. And the Mexicans could not compete with our manipulated market price of corn. It completely wiped them out. Not a peep was made by your media. Nobody cared. Corn exports tripled to Mexico within that decade. So all these rich, giant corporate farms in America made tons of money while these small Mexican farmers were out of their, their uh, generational farms. In less than 10 years. Less than 10 years. Now as a side note, you, can keep, you should keep in mind on this, which I think is part of the plan, all those farmers that lost their farms and their, and their land uh, got put up for sale. It all got bought up, pennies on the dollar, of course, because it was so cheap. But believe me, they wasted no time in grabbing all that agricultural land either. Keep that in mind. I mean, uh, you know, if you want to see the pattern happen happening in the United States, you can already see what happened when they put them out, when they put the small farmers out of business. How they gobbled up all these lands, uh, acres and acres of generational lands. So what did all those farmers and farmhands do? They went looking for work because they don't want to see their family starve. There was only so many factory jobs on the border that they could go to. Uh, all those Mexican farmers and all their work hands went into the United States at that time looking for work so they could feed their families. Now at the time, the United States was uh, it was going through a big boom and high rolling times, man. There were big, uh, there was huge amounts of debt being taken out over bubbles in the housing market and people running up their credit cards so they could live like they couldn't afford. There was a big boom in the United States, so nobody cared about all these Mexicans coming into their country. In fact, they wanted them to cut their grass and do their landscape work. And that went around for a while. You know, the big wheels were turning until the housing bubble popped shortly after 9-11. And 9-11 brings up another point that I have to make with you that I see as part of the whole plan. We all remember 9-11, okay? If you're not, you're not an American. And when that happened, boy, they were going to save us. They were signing the Patriot Act, and everybody was waving their flags and eating their apple pie. And, man, we were going to save America. And, and that's why we invaded Iraq, because, you know, there were Saudi Arabians to deal with. And uh, we need to close the borders up, because we've got to worry about the Canadians, right? I mean, we have, you know, we've got to worry about them. And we want to close all the borders up around here, and we militarize the police more. And we were going to close off all the borders, so we spent... Millions and billions of dollars, even lately, we're putting up drones up here in northern Minnesota and northern Dakota to keep an eye on those evil uh, Canadians uh, from coming into our country. And we sent AWAC planes down here and doubled the surveillance teams and Coast Guard and, you know, just building up all these alphabet teams from Washington and militarizing the police. And they basically cut off all the drug routes that regularly run on the Gulf Coast here into the Keys and and Florida, and they really got tough over here in the Pacific, and they even started running AWAC planes over there, and just sealed up the borders, except, except, ironically, for the Mexican border. Now, that I don't know if that seems strange to you, but that seems really strange to me. No matter, you know, no matter if the Republicans are in or the Democrats are in, they leave this border wide open, and they close everything else off almost making a Venturi effect in New Mexico. Now, Mexico, historically, has never been a regular trade route for drugs. It's been much easier to fly the drugs from Central America or, you know, stop in Cuba even and then get them in through Florida. Well, they've cut all that off and really, you know, built up all the, the border and, and uh, port testing. But they left this wide open. So this flooded Mexico. Uh, at this point, impoverished, and these three million farmers out of business and all these uh, farmhands out of business, flooded them with uh, drug cartels from Central America and also opened up opportunities for criminal-minded Mexicans. This just created a breeding ground for this kind of crime and this kind of traffic. Why do you think they did that? Because that's exactly what they wanted. And crime has exploded. There's 50,000 people dead over this. Even lately, I'm not, even, I'm not going to get into this, but this Fast and Furious fiasco that we would have never known about if one officer did not come forward. I want you to think about all this and put it together. This all took place after 9-11. They've closed the whole country up, 
and they're making them bring the drugs in through Mexico, which is on you know on top of everything else has totally destroyed its uh, its culture, almost trying to destabilize this country. So think about that when you're thinking about you know all these Mexicans coming in to get your jobs and actually what they're going through and why this is happening. Why is this happening all of a sudden? Think about these things. Everything I'm telling you, you can check up on. You can look at it fact for fact, when it happened, how it happened. Even as we speak, that's what's happening. And the drugs are being funneled through Mexico because that now is the easiest um, course of action. That's the easiest path to get them into our country. And they are purposely leaving that open and causing this de destabilization of, of Mexico itself. And getting back to our food being uh, subsidized, this is still going on. Corn is the most heavily subsidized uh, agricultural uh, product. And if they ever want to pull the plug, I want you to imagine, I want you to imagine yourself where that's going to leave you, where food prices are going to go. Because right now your market, your food market in the United States is artificially maintained. That's what destroyed the Mexican agricultural community. Where are you going to go when they pull the plug? What country are you going to run off to to uh, feed your family? You won't have one. <clears throat> anyway, uh, that's a little peek down the rabbit hole for you of why this is happening. And I would encourage you to look at this, you know, the bigger picture of how this is being played out and how patient they are uh, with their plans and how... Their plans are so well thought out, and, and they've done this before. They know how people work. They know how to manipulate these markets. They know how to manipulate cultures. You know, the only I can't always figure out why. I'm not a prophet. I can't see where this is going. But there's definitely some plan behind this. this Mexico was systematically destroyed. The whole culture. And now they're trying to send it into uh, destabilization. And for some reason they want that on our border. And they want you to hate them for taking your jobs. I, I want you to look past you know, these Mexicans that are leaving their country to come up in here looking for work. And why? What is making them leave their country to come up here? And what's happened? That's, that's what I'm, in, I'm imploring you or asking you to look at. Anyway, guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.